Hi, this is the Sankofa Pan-African series. In this episode, we'll be looking at two Nubian kingdoms. Um, we'll take a brief look at Kema and then um, also look at um, Kush. Now, although it is the best known Nubian kingdom, Kush was not the only Nubian civilization. A number of kingdoms evolved out of Nubia over a period of about 3,000 years. Even before the 25th dynasty, when Nubians ruled Egypt, Kema was a very powerful Nubian city-state, which ran alongside Egypt from about 2450 BC to 1450 BC. The kingdom of Kema's territory was as extensive as Egypt's because Kema controlled the Nile Valley between the first and fourth cataracts. Kema was primarily um, rural or agrarian. The population of this period practiced farming, hunting, fishing, and raising of livestock such as cattle and sheep. They also produced some ceramic and metal goods. Um, now, so over to Kush. Now, the kingdom of Kush, which was part of Nubia, established itself after the disintegration of what was known as the New Kingdom of Egypt. Its first capital laid south of the Egyptian Nile Valley in Napata. Napata has been located as um, Karima in northern part of modern-day Sudan. Now, Kush succeeded in invading Egypt in the 8th century BC and its monarchs became the pharaohs of the 25th dynasty of Egypt. Pi, spelled P-I-Y-E, was the first Nubian pharaoh of, the, of Egypt's 25th dynasty. The most influential pharaoh of the 25th dynasty was his son called Tahaka, also known as Kumnemefumri. So Tahaka was the most um, influential of the Nubian uh, pharaohs. Now, the city of Meroe served as the southern administrative center for the kingdom of Kush, beginning from around 750 BC, at a time when Napata was still um, the capital of Kush. The kingdom of Kush influenced the political and cultural landscape of northeastern Africa for a long time. Now, ancient Nubian cultures were also highly sophisticated and the region served as a main commercial market for goods from the African interior, the Arabian desert and the Mediterranean basin. Nubian communities traded in ivory, gold, ebony, and skins of large animals like elephants from the sub-Saharan um, Africa. They also exported animals such as monkeys, elephants, um, antelopes, and giraffes across the Mediterranean and the Near East. In exchange, they imported olive oil, incense, Timber got from um, Acacia and um, Sida, and bronze from Arabia, Egypt, the Maghreb, and the Mediterranean Basin. Now, Nubian pharaohs adapted the traditional headgear that Egyptian pharaohs used. Uh, the, the headgear that the Egyptian pharaohs used to wear. Uh, was adapted in order to show their double kingship of Egypt and Kush. The traditional pharaonic um, headgear worn by Egyptian rulers depicted the Uraeus, an artistic uh, figure of the cobra to symbolize authority over lower Egypt 
and the Nile Delta. Some of their headgears also featured a vulture, symbolizing Upper Egypt. Nubian pharaohs who ruled Egypt changed the style of the pharaonic um, headgear. Uh, and um, so their own headgear featured two cobras, symbolizing Egypt and Kush. Uh, one of the reasons why the history of this period is complicated is because the Assyrians who later invaded um, uh, Egypt and Egyptians themselves of the late period tried to erase Kushite leadership and the 25th dynasty from history by totally destroying, by, by destroying uh, their statues, steles, and even their names. By, they, they even removed their names from the historic records. Um, thanks for, for, for being a part of this episode. Don't forget to subscribe if you've not. Um, like us and feel free to share with your friends. In the next episode, we'll be looking at another Nubian civilization, Meru'i.